Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellus series, we will highlight the human calculator. In the annals of history, there occasionally emerge figures that defy expectations and challenge our perceptions of what's possible. Thomas Fuller, colloquially known as the Virginia Calculator, was one such individual. A genius and mathematical expert, Thomas Fuller was a gem. His mathematical genius manifested in various ways on a Virginia plantation, from counting cowtail hairs to astronomical computations. He was a man who defied the odds, transcended the constraints of illiteracy, and rose above the barriers of his time, proving that brilliance is not confined by the shackles of illiteracy or prejudice. Thomas' story began in the heart of Africa, somewhere between the slave coast of West Africa in what is now present-day Liberia and the kingdom of Dahomey, modern-day Benin. Born into a world filled with the vibrant rhythms and rich tapestry of African culture, Thomas's life took an unexpected turn when he was captured at the tender age of 14 and thrust into the harrowing abyss of the transatlantic slave trade. His tragic journey led him to the shores of Virginia becoming part of the estate of Presley and Elizabeth Cox. Yet even in bondage, Thomas's unique mathematical talent would not remain hidden. Despite the shared illiteracy with his enslavers, he possessed an innate ability to compute intricate mathematical problems. This remarkable gift of performing complex calculations in his head made him indispensable on their expansive plantation. The practicality of Thomas's genius became evident as he seamlessly integrated his mathematical prowess into every facet of managing the 232-acre plantation farm. The farm, covered in a perpetual mist and surrounded by dense woods, had seen better days, but Thomas seemed to breathe new life into it with every calculation he made. The expansive meadow, a patchwork of green and gold, had always been a challenge to enclose. Presley Cox struggled to come up with the number of poles and rails required to encircle the meadow. It was Thomas who recommended a precise calculation for the supplies necessary to craft the fence, after simply looking out into the distance where the meadow laid in the shadows. But it was during the planting season that the Cox family faced its most significant challenge. And it was at this time that Thomas's brilliance became the stuff of legends, Faced with the challenge of sowing the vast fields with corn, Presley's failure to reap the right amount of crops left him on the brink of financial ruin. Staring intently at the field, Thomas would step forward, once again with his uncanny ability laying out a sowing plan so detailed and precise that every kernel of corn found its place. The harvest and annual yield of the Cox family plantation was nothing short of miraculous, and it was the highest of any other farmer in the surrounding counties. Whispers began, first among the enslaved and then, like wildfire, among the plantation owners. Where the average farmer saw challenges, Thomas viewed them as mathematical puzzles waiting to be solved. As the years unfolded and the stories of his brilliance slowly began to traverse the colonies, Thomas's exceptional abilities weaved a tapestry of wonder and curiosity amongst the white settlers. His talents then truly came to light when a Philadelphia Quaker and businessman named William Hartshorn relocated his family to Alexandria, Virginia. Intrigued and a bit skeptical, Hartshorn and three fellow Quakers embarked on a journey to meet Thomas and put his extraordinary arithmetic feats to the test. With one visitor recording calculations on paper and the others posing intricate questions, Thomas, now over 70 years old, faced their inquiries with unwavering confidence. In a dimly lit room on a Virginia estate, Thomas Fuller, with deep-set eyes and a steely demeanor, sat facing a table. Across from him was the well-dressed Hartshorn and his three friends. The wooden floorboards creaked as the evening wind blew, carrying with it the weight of expectation. Hartshorn, with an initial air of arrogance and skepticism, cleared his throat and announced their purpose to challenge Thomas's reputed mathematical prowess. To his right, a fellow Quaker, quill in hand, prepared to jot down calculations. The atmosphere was thick with tension, the kind that precedes a duel. Only this was a contest of intellect, not swords. The first question was voiced, probing the depths of human calculation. How many seconds are there in a year and a half? With minimal hesitation, Thomas resounded with precision, and his voice was unwavering, resonating with confidence and clarity. Sir, Sir it is 47 million and 304,000. The scribe hastily scribbled, glancing up in surprise at the precision of Thomas's answer. Question number two was posed. How many seconds has a man lived who is 70 years, 17 days, and 12 hours old? Thomas's focused gaze never wavered. 
he seemed to briefly retreat into a world of numbers, mentally navigating complex calculations at a pace that left his interrogators astonished. In just a minute and a half, Thomas delivered his answer with an assuredness that demonstrated his pure genius. It is 2,210,500,800, sir. But the white men were intent on finding ways to reject Fuller's extraordinary intelligence and value. One of the white challengers, perhaps out of disbelief or a desire to prove himself smarter, objected to Thomas's response, arguing that his own pre-calculated number did not match. Thomas, standing confident, calm, and resolute, gently pointed out, Massa, you forgot, you forgot the, the leap year. year. By the third question, a palpable shift had occurred in the room. The Quakers, initially dubious, now leaned in, hanging on to every number that Thomas uttered. Question three consisted of a mathematical enigma concerning farm animals, cows, and piglets. Initially, Thomas misinterpreted it, but as soon as Hartshorn clarified the riddle, Thomas' lightning-fast mind responded with the astounding answer. Sir, it is 34,588,806. When he delivered his final answer, a hushed reverence settled over the room. All four Quakers now met Thomas's gaze with newfound respect. The meeting concluded not with the triumphant gloating of a victor, but with the quiet dignity of a black man who had proven his worth beyond the shackles of his circumstances. The four Philadelphians departed, their notes brimming with awe. The tale of that evening, of an elderly enslaved man who astounded them with his unparalleled mathematical genius, would echo through the corridors of time, becoming the stuff of legend. One of the Quakers remarked that it was a massive tragedy that this enslaved man had been denied an education. Thomas Fuller, however, disagreed. He insisted that his lack of formal schooling was a blessing, replying, Many learned men be great fools. When asked how he became such a mathematical wonder, Thomas replied that he perfected his skills through practical applications around the farm. He counted the hairs in a cow's tail. He counted grains in bushels of wheat or flaxseed. He was constantly calibrating approaches to measuring the distance between two objects. He even waded into complex astronomy-related computations involving the movement of the sun, stars, and other celestial objects. In 1790, at the age of 80, Thomas Fuller's extraordinary journey came to an end. A Boston newspaper immortalized him with these words. Thus died Negro Tom, this self-taught arithmetician, this untutored scholar. Had his opportunities of improvement been equal to those of thousands of his fellow men, neither the Royal Society of London, the Academy of Science at Paris, nor even Newton himself need have been ashamed to acknowledge him a brother in science. Thomas Fuller, the Virginia calculator, remains a testament to the boundless potential that humanity possesses even when the world attempts to shroud it in darkness. It makes you wonder if, given the freedom and resources, Thomas Fuller may have had the potential to make extraordinary contributions in the area of math and astrology, with the likes of Albert Einstein or even Sir Isaac Newton who had gained international prominence just half a century earlier. If we put Thomas Fuller's mathematical skills in today's context, he was essentially using computer science algorithms to solve the problems he was given. An algorithm is a set of steps or instructions used to solve problems or perform tasks based on the understanding of available alternatives. So Thomas' entire process for calculating mathematical problems was an intricate application of algorithms stored in his head. These stored procedures were systematically used to analyze, process, and extract large amounts of data in not only agriculture and farming applications, but everyday life applications. We salute you, Mr. Fuller. May you rest in power.